2 Kings 9. At that time, Elisha the prophet called one of the prophet's disciples and said to him, Gird your loins, take this flask of oil in your hand, and go to Ramoth Gilead. When you arrive there, find Jehu, son of Jehoshaphat, son of Nimshi. Tell him to arise from among his colleagues and bring him into an inner chamber. Then take the flask of oil and pour it on his head and say, Thus said Hashem, I have anointed you king over Israel. Then open the door and flee. Do not delay. So the young man, the youthful prophet, went to Ramoth Gilead. He arrived, and behold, the commanders of the army were sitting. And he said, I have a message for you, O commander. Jehu said, For which of all of us? And he replied, For you, O commander. So he arose and went inside. The prophet poured the oil upon his head and said to him, Thus said Hashem, God of Israel, I have anointed you king over the people of Hashem, over Israel. You shall strike down the house of Ahab, your master. Then I shall be avenged of the blood of my servants, the prophets, and the blood of all the servants of Hashem from the hand of Jezebel. The entire house of Ahab shall perish. I shall obliterate every male offspring from Ahab and all property, whether hidden or public, in Israel. And I shall make the house of Ahab like the house of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, and like the house of Baasha, son of Ahijah. And Jezebel shall be eaten by the dogs in the portion of Jezreel, and no one will bury her. He then opened the door and fled. Jehu went out to his master's servants, and one of them said to him, Is all well? Why did this lunatic come to you? And he said to them, You know that man in his prattle. But they said, It's a lie. Tell us now. He replied, Such and such did he say to me, saying, Thus said Hashem, I have anointed you king over Israel. Hurriedly, each of them took his garment and put it underneath him, on top of the steps. They sounded the shofar and said, Jehu has become king. Jehu, son of Jehoshaphat, son of Nimshi, then conspired against Jehoram. Jehoram had been protecting Ramoth Gilead he and all of Israel, against Hazael, king of Aram. And then King Jehoram returned to convalesce in Jezreel from the wounds that the Aramaeans had inflicted upon him when he was fighting Hazael, king of Aram. Jehu said, If this is truly your will, let no fugitive escape the city to go and tell the news in Jezreel. Jehu rode and went to Jezreel, for Jehoram was lying there, and Ahaziah, king of Judah, had come down to visit Jehoram. The watchman was standing on the tower in Jezreel, and he saw the company of Jehu as he approached. And he said, I see a company. Jehoram said, Select a rider and send him to meet them and ask, Do you come in peace? So the horseman went toward him and said, Thus said the king, Do you come in peace? Jehu said to him, What is it to you, whether it isn't for peace? Come around to my rear. The watchman reported, saying, The messenger reached him, but he did not return. So he sent a second horseman, who came to them and said, Thus said the king, Do you come in peace? Jehu said to him, What is it to you whether it is for peace? Come around to my rear. The watchman reported, saying, He has reached them, but has not returned. The driving is like the driving of Jehu, grandson of Nimshi, for he is driving his chariot recklessly. Jehoram then said, Harness my chariot, and he harnessed his chariot. Jehoram, king of Israel, and Ahaziah, king of Judah, then set out, each man in his chariot, going out toward Jehu. And they encountered him at the portion of Naboth, the Jezreelite. When Jehoram saw Jehu, he said, Do you come in peace, Jehu? And he replied, What is the peace that it should extend to the harlotries of your mother Jezebel and to her abundant witchcraft? Jehoram then turned the reins in his hand and fled and said to Ahaziah, It's a trick, Ahaziah! Jehu drew his bow fully and hit Jehoram between his shoulder blades. The arrow protruded from his heart, and he collapsed in his chariot. Jehu then said to Bidkar, his captain, Pick him up and throw him into the portion of the field belonging to Naboth, the Jezreelite. For remember that I and you were riding together behind his father Ahab when the prophet of Hashem proclaimed this prophecy about him. Did I not see the blood of Naboth and the blood of his descendants last night? The word of Hashem. I shall therefore bring retribution upon you in this very portion. The word of Hashem. So now pick him up and throw him into the portion, according to the word of Hashem. Ahaziah king of Judah saw, and he fled by way of the garden house. Jehu chased after him and said, Strike him down also in the chariot. They wounded him in the ascent of Gur, which is by Ibliam. 
he fled to Megiddo and died there. His servants brought him by chariot to Jerusalem and buried him in his grave with his forefathers in the city of David. And in the eleventh year of Jehoram, son of Ahab, Ahaziah reigned over Judah. Jehu then came to Jezreel. Jezebel heard, and she put mascara on her eyes and adorned her head, and she looked out of the window. Jehu was coming through the gate, and she said, Is all well, Zimri, murderer of his master? He raised his face toward the window and said, Who is with me? Who? And two or three officials looked out to him. He said, Push her out of the window. They pushed her out, and some of her blood flowed to the wall and to the horses. And Jehu trampled her body. He then came in and ate and drank. Then he said, Attend to this cursed woman and bury her, for she is the daughter of a king. So they went to bury her, but they did not find anything left of her except the skull, the feet, and the palms of her hands. They returned and told him, and he said, It is the word of Hashem that he spoke through the hand of his servant Elijah the Tishbite, saying, In the portion of Jezreel, the dogs will devour the flesh of Jezebel. And Jezebel's carcass shall be like the fertilizer spread over the face of the earth in the portion of Jezreel, so that they will not be able to say, This is Jezebel. 2 Kings 10 Ahab had seventy sons in Samaria. Jehu wrote scrolls and sent them to Samaria, to the elder officials of Jezreel, and to those who were rearing the children of Ahab, saying, And now, when this scroll reaches you, since your master's children are with you, and with you the chariot force and the horses, fortified city and weapons. See who is the best and most virtuous of your master's sons and place him upon his father's throne and fight for the sake of your master's house. They were exceedingly frightened, for they said, If even those two kings could not stand against him, how can we stand? So the one in charge of the household and the one in charge of the city and the elders and those who were rearing the children sent to Jehu saying, We are your servants, and everything you tell us we will do. We will not appoint anyone as king. Do whatever is good in your eyes. Jehu wrote them a second scroll, saying, If you are with me, and you wish to listen to my voice, take the heads of the male offspring of your master and come to meet me at this time tomorrow to Jezreel. Now the sons of the king number seventy men, and the great men of the city are raising them. And so it happened. When the scroll reached them, they took the king's sons and slaughtered the seventy men. They put their heads in kettles and sent them to Jehu, to Jezreel. A messenger came and told him, saying, They have brought the heads of the king's sons. And he said, Place them in two piles at the gateway until the morning. It happened in the morning that he went out and stood and said to all the people, You are righteous. Behold, I organized a rebellion against my master and killed him. But who has struck down all of these men? Know, therefore, that there shall not fall unfulfilled to the earth any word of Hashem. For Hashem spoke concerning the house of Ahab, and Hashem has carried out all that he has spoken through the hand of his servant Elijah. Jehu then struck down all those who remained of the house of Ahab in Jezreel, and all of his notables and acquaintances and priests, until he left him not a survivor. He arose and came home, then set out for Samaria. He was at a gathering house for shepherds along the way, and Jehu encountered some relatives of Ahaziah, king of Judah. And he said, Who are you? They replied, We are relatives of Ahaziah, and have come down for the welfare of the sons of the king and the sons of the queen. Jehu then said, Capture them alive. And they captured them alive. He then slaughtered forty-two men into the pit of the gathering house. He did not leave any of them alive. Jehu went on from there and encountered Jehonadab, son of Reshab, coming toward him. He greeted him and said to him, Is your heart sincere as my heart is with your heart? And Jehonadab said, It is, it is, give me your hand. Jehu gave him his hand and pulled him up to him into the chariot. And he said, Come with me and see my zealous vengeance for Hashem. And they drove Jehonadab in Jehu's chariot. Jehu arrived at Samaria and struck down all those that remained of Ahab in Samaria until he annihilated him in accordance with the word of Hashem, which he had spoken to Elijah. Jehu then gathered together all the people and said to them, Ahab worshipped the Baal just a bit. Jehu will worship it very much. So now all the prophets of the Baal and all its servants and all its priests 
Gather them unto me. Let no man be absent, for I have a great sacrifice for the Baal, and anyone who is absent shall not live. Jehu was acting with cunning in order to eliminate the worshipers of the Baal. Jehu said, Convoke an assembly unto the Baal. And they declared it. Jehu sent messengers throughout all of Israel, and all the worshipers of the Baal came. There was no man left who did not come. They arrived at the temple of the Baal, and the temple of the Baal became filled from end to end. Jehu then said to the one in charge of the wardrobe, Bring out a vestment for each of the worshipers of the Baal. And he brought out the vestments for them. Jehu and Jehonadab son of Reshab arrived at the temple of the Baal. And he said to the worshipers of the Baal, Search and ascertain, lest there be among you worshipers of Hashem, for only worshipers of the Baal alone may attend. They came to offer peace offerings and elevation offerings. Jehu posted eighty men outside and said, If any one of these men whom I am putting under your charge escapes, your soul shall be in place of his soul. It happened, when he finished performing the elevation offering service, that Jehu said to the runners and to the captains, Come and strike them down. Let no man get away. They struck them down by the sword. The runners and the captains threw themselves onward as they advanced going to the city of the temple of the Baal. They removed the monuments of the temple of the Baal and burned them. They smashed the pillar of the Baal and they demolished the temple of the Baal and designated it for latrines until today. Thus, Jehu eliminated the Baal from Israel. But regarding the sins of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, who caused Israel to sin, the golden calves that were in Beth-el and in Dan, Jehu did not turn away from them. Hashem said to Jehu, Because you have done well, doing that which is proper in my eyes, for you have done to the house of Ahab according to all that was in my heart. Four generations of your descendants will sit upon the throne of Israel for your sake. But Jehu did not watch to follow the Torah of Hashem, God of Israel, with all his heart. He did not turn away from the sins of Jeroboam that he caused Israel to sin. In those days, Hashem began to cut away at Israel. Hazael struck at them along the entire border of Israel, from the Jordan toward the rising sun, all the land of Gilead of the Gadite, the Reubenite, and the Manasite, from Aurer, which is on the Arnon Brook, to Gilead and Bashan. The rest of the deeds of Jehu and all that he did and all of his might, behold, they are recorded in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel. Jehu lay with his forefathers, and they buried him in Samaria. His son Jehoahaz reigned in his place. The days that Jehu ruled over Israel were twenty-eight years in Samaria. 2 Kings 11 When Athaliah, Ahaziah's mother, saw that her son had died, she arose and exterminated all the offspring of the royal family. But Jehosheba, King Jehoram's daughter, Ahaziah's sister, took Joash, son of Ahaziah, and smuggled him from the midst of the king's sons who were being killed, and put him and his nursemaid in the bedchamber. They hid him from Athaliah, so he was not put to death. He remained with her in the temple of Hashem, hidden for six years, while Athaliah reigned over the land. In the seventh year, Jehoiada sent for and took the captains of hundreds, who were over the mighty men and the foot soldiers, and he brought them to meet with him in the temple of Hashem. He made a covenant with them and adjured them in the temple of Hashem, and he showed them the king's son. He commanded them, saying, This is what you are to do. A third of those of you who are arriving on the Sabbath will be in charge of the watch of the king's palace. A third will be stationed at the Sir gate and a third will be stationed at the gate behind the infantry. Be careful to keep the watch of the palace diligently. The other two groups among you will be joined by all those who are leaving on the Sabbath. They shall keep the guard of the temple of Hashem for the king. You will thus encircle the king all around, each man with his weapons in his hand. Any outsider who breaks into your ranks should be put to death. You must remain with the king when he goes out and when he comes in. So the captains of hundreds did according to all that Jehoiada the Kohen had commanded them. Each captain took his men, those who were arriving on the Sabbath, and those who were leaving on the Sabbath, and came to Jehoiada the Kohen. The Kohen gave to the captains of hundreds the spear arsenal and the shields of King David, which were in the temple of Hashem. The infantry stood, each man with his weapons in his hand, from the right flank of the temple to the left flank of the temple, near the altar and the sanctuary, surrounding the king. Then 
Jehoiada brought out the king's son and placed the crown and the divine testimony upon him. They declared him king and anointed him. And they clapped their hands and said, Long live the king! Athaliah heard the sound of the people who were rushing. And she came to the people in the temple of Hashem. She looked, and there was the king standing at the place in the royal manor, with the officers and the trumpets next to the king, and all the people of the land rejoicing and blowing trumpets. Athaliah tore her garments and shouted, A rebellion! A rebellion! Jehoiada the Kohen commanded the captains of hundreds, the officers of the force, and said to them, Take her away, but keep her within the ranks of the guards, and anyone who comes after her slay with a sword. For the Kohen said, Let her not be put to death in the temple of Hashem. They made place for her, and she came by the way of the horse's entrance to the palace of the king, and there she was put to death. Jehoiada then sealed the covenant between Hashem and the king and the people to be a people of Hashem, and between the king and the people. All the people of the land came to the temple of Baal and tore it down. They smashed its altars and images, and Matan, priest of the Baal, they slew in front of the altars. Jehoiada the Kohen then appointed administrators over the temple of Hashem. He took the captains of hundreds, the mighty men, the infantry, and all the people of the land, and they escorted the king down from the temple of Hashem. They proceeded by way of the gate of the infantry to the royal palace, and he sat on the royal throne. The entire people of the land rejoiced, and the city was tranquil, for they had put Athaliah to death by the sword in the king's palace. Okay, so Jehu and Hazael, which have already been anointed for kingship, are now set to inherit the throne. And by inherit, I mean they're going to take, and it's going to be bloody. <laughs> Jehu gets the message, come back, and says, oh, nothing. And then the friends are like, no, what did he say? And he's like, I'm king. <laughs> and he instantly goes to Jezreel and the killing starts. He finds Jehoram, king of Israel. Boom, kills him. Ahaziah, king of Judah, he spectacularly kills. Jezebel, the wife of Ahab, gone. Brutal, brutal. All of Ahab's 70 sons. Now this, he was, he didn't really have to lift a finger it was just the threat. And uh, these guys flipped their loyalty and murdered these sons. It, I don't know, but th that's what's written. All of their friends, all of the notables, relatives, minor acquaintances, neighbors, the guy that delivered the milk, the newspaper man, everybody was killed if they had anything to do with Ahab. Then all of the worshipers of the Baal. And all of the priests of the Baal, all the false prophets, all of them killed. But Jehu, who acts with extreme prejudice for Hashem, does not abandon the way that was set up by Jeroboam all those years ago. He does not follow the Torah. And perhaps they don't have one. <laughs> and this is a sin because, you know, they are still the 10 tribes. I mean, it's not the 12 tribes, but they're still the 10 tribes. And these 10 tribes are bound by all the things that are written in this Torah. These religious practices are the reason that these people fall and they fall every time. So here we have it. Somewhere in 815 BC, Hazael attacks and chops away these entire sections of land of the northern kingdom. The Bashan, the Gilead, one half of Manasseh, the tribe of Reuben, Gad. This is the beginning of the cutting away. So there is absolutely something about power that makes people go bananas. And while Jehu's annihilation of an entire family is celebrated, this grandmother who wants to be queen so she kills all of her grandchildren, that is insanity. And remember, she's doing this because she wants the power. They kill her dead. And for the first time, we see a real priest, a chief Cohen. They rip up the other temples again. They destroy the worship of other gods again. They restored the zero tolerance policy. And they trained the new king, Joash, in the way of Hashem. Thank you for watching. The NQE is out.